Hello and welcome to another Build a Soil YouTube video. Today we have a product highlight video, which is kind of like a marketing video, but it also helps explain why we have certain products, how to use them. And today we're doing EM5, which is one of our most universal products customers have come to really, really depend on and like having at their house for a number of reasons. And I wanna go over where it came from, how you can make your own, or if you wanna buy it from us, you can get it from us. And so that's what this video is about today. Um, you can see I have several different sizes of it here. We offer it in quarts and two and a half gallons in gallons. This is a gallon one that I've been using, I have open. And so I'll be able to show you what it looks like. I'll pour some in here so you can kind of see the color. And it smells really good. It's one of my favorite products here. But let's get into what EM5 is, why you would use it, and then we'll get into making your own versus getting it from us. And I think that you'll have the whole story at that point. Really, EM5 is a formula from the company that makes EM1. And the way that this started is they came up with a number of recipes that you could make by fermenting using the starter bacteria, which is the EM1. And the EM1, if you do your research, it's a rabbit hole that a lot of us begin with because they're one of the original effective microorganisms and they've patented the EM1. So when you're online and someone says, hey, did you make EM? There's no way to make EM1. That's a proprietary patented product. In fact, they feed purple non-sulfur bacteria, yeast, and lactobacillus in separate vats, and then they bottle it. And so at that point, it's stable for about a year, and you can actually activate that by adding molasses and water and fermenting it and really increasing the volume to save money. But instead of just activating it, you can also make different products out of it. And so one of them, the five formula, the EM5, it's used as a foliar spray and for inoculating soil. But for the most part, it's used mainly for like bacteria, pests, problems. And so we're not selling this for that purpose. We sell it as a cleaning product, which makes sense because the best thing you can do from a natural perspective is to be preventative instead of eradicatory. And so we're looking to prevent things from happening by keeping clean. That's really what EM5 is for. So I use it to dunk my clones, to spray my seedlings, to clean my trays, to spray my mother plants and to spray plants as they go into flower. We even have people that use it on their outdoor all the way up to finish because it's so gentle on the trichomes that they can keep the dust off the plants and they can keep the plants really clean. Now, of course, a lot of these ingredients, if you look at them separately from making your own homemade version, you might be able to make like a pesticide version on your own at home by using hot chili peppers and other things. So making your own, you can gear it towards different purposes. And so fast forward, just in this whole story, we have EM, which was a rabbit hole we went down. And then early on, Clackamas Coot turned me on to Gil Carandang and his website, The Unconventional Farmer. And at that time, Patrick was on the website working with Gil and he was putting the own home fermentation recipes. And so we were messing with a lot of that stuff. He was doing like really tiny micro fermentations just for home use. Very, very cool. And then now, right now, like on social media, there's a lot of growers that are using KNF or Jadam. And so all of these are evolutions of this fermentation. And so the Jadam is, this, is the newer version of KNF by Master Cho's son. And the Jadam really preaches like not adding the sugar, not importing stuff, really just making it on site with what you have. And in the Jadam book, they talk about making your own organic pesticide by taking their wetting agent and then taking one of their herb extracts by boiling the herb or whatever the process is. And on the farm, you'd actually choose the herb that worked the best by testing it. Once you identified what worked the best, you'd make a large solution and use it on your whole farm. So it's very DIY. But when it comes to EM5, it's a pretty specific formula. So let me go over that. It's a fermentation and you'd use EM1 microbial inoculant. You would also use blackstrap molasses. That's the food source. You would use a distilled liquor. So 40% alcohol, such as vodka, tequila, whiskey, sake, 5%. These are the percentage of ingredients. So 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, and it goes on down. This is just a, a recipe that you can print online. Let's not pay attention to the percentages right now. If you're gonna make it, this one is from goodmicrobes.org. I just printed it from there because they had a detailed document. You can also see right on our EM5 product page, we have a recipe that you can follow on there. And so the EM1, the blackstrap molasses, distilled liquor, vinegar, and water. And so I'm gonna tell you what ingredients we chose to use. They're a little bit different than this list as far as we chose the most premium version if we're gonna offer it commercially. But at home, the next ingredient besides those that I listed would be the plant ingredient. And so this could be herbs, it could be garlic, it could be hot chili peppers. What we decided to do to make it commercially viable and 
to not have a like a carbon, the plant material being stuck in there and filtering it and having any issues in the bottle, we decided to use essential oils. And that's the plant compound that we're using. We use a organic peppermint oil that's very, very potent and we mix it into the cleaner. And that, that's something that I think makes it why I like it so much, but it's also adding that plant property that makes it a good cleaner and also makes it like a deterrent. And if you look up essential oils, there's a lot of reasons why people use them for pests and mildews and molds. And so it could lend itself to that. But in your own homemade version, garlic, hot peppers, sea salt, liquid minerals, lemon, ginger, neem. I mean, there's so many other things that you can incorporate here, right? And so I actually do that. When I use EM5, sometimes I'll add some neem oil. Sometimes I'll add other essential oils into it. Sometimes I'll add some yucca or some uh, kuyaha or other things that I want. And this is kind of like my base, my go-to when it comes to my cleaning product. I actually use this around the house as a cleaner because the way it was set out to be made was to be a totally organic soap. And what I mean by that is, Normally when you're doing soap making, we're using potassium hydroxide or lye and all these different caustic products that are challenging. This has none of that. So that's how you would make EM5 or that's at least the ingredients. And then how to make it is you mix the stuff together, you add the vinegar, you add the EM1, you pour the mixture into a bottle and then you let it ferment for two weeks or longer at room temperature. And eventually if you wanna use a pH meter, it's gonna go below four, preferably to about 3.5, a range of 3.2 to 3.7. That means it's stabilized and ready. And so when you're making your own EM, you know that that's a pH lockdown. Once that happens, it's stable. And same with EM5, we actually ferment it, it goes through a biological process, and it really homogenizes all the ingredients to be as effective as possible when we're making it. And then on here, there's also some recommendations, right? So diluting with water, one part EM5 to 1,000 parts water, which is a teaspoon to 1.3 gallons of water. We use ours a lot heavier. If you're making it with your own plant herbs at home, you wanna start off on the low end and work your way up, and I'll explain how the dosage works. Other things it talks about, you can use this on the soil, but with the essential oil, and just generally the way we use it, I prefer to use this as a foliar spray, as a cleaner, or to mist the mulch layer. I don't water with it. I don't actually drench with it. Applications are most effective when applied in early morning. It also could be done at night instead. There is some essential oil in it, and that could be phytotoxic, and so it's best not do it in bright light. This is so gentle at the lower dose, I really wouldn't be worried about it, but I'd like to give you best practices so you don't have any concern. And, and really that's it. They do talk about best practices would be alternating with a regular activated EM instead of the EM5. I just use the EM5. Then this is from our website. It's a printout right on the product page that you can just scroll down and read. And the recipe is for EM5 using EM1, molasses, vinegar, distilled alcohol, plant material, and then you fill the container with warm water, 110 to 120 degrees, seal and ferment it until the pH goes below four. And so basically same thing as we just discussed. And there's some acreage application rates. You can check these out. Again, this one was from goodmicrobes.org. The other one is just from Build a Soil on the product page. I think if you've heard, like if you ever Google in gardening forums or you buy a gardening book, there's a lot of homemade solutions. My go-to when I first started the, the Build a Soil way before I knew what it even was, just the methods passed down for organic gardening, we would use Dr. Bronner's peppermint soap. We use one to two ounces per gallon. You'd mix that, spray the plants. And it does really, really well. I do find that the potassium hydroxide or the lye or whatever makes that liquid soap can be a little hard on like the plant cuticle, that waxy layer, and it can, it can, it's a little less than ideal, but it's a really good formula. So if you're stuck, you've got an issue, you got a pest, or you just wanna make sure that you don't have it, you got a clone, you don't have anything, one to two ounces of a Castile soap works phenomenal. We have Growing Organic and they make some soaps and we do have a Castile soap that's great. Dr. Bronner's is really good. Now I wanna get into the rest of how to use it and our ingredients that we used. But before I do that, I wanna bring this story full circle and tell you how it started. The local distributor for EM1 was, is Terraganics and it used to be owned by um, Eric Lancaster and he and I developed a really good relationship over the years. And he showed up and he told me that he had a cleaning product that he really wanted me to use, that maybe we could make a special formulation. And so we did, we adapted the formula for build soil but originally this formula was a cleaning product that he designed in helps for Hurricane Katrina on all of the black mold that was in all of the houses. And so they started spraying EM on it thinking, oh, we'll handle this, we'll get rid of the toxic mold. Tur turns out the EM was not as effective as an EM5 when it came to the black mold. And the reason why is that alcohol and the vinegar would help cut through so that it could actually get in and do its job to kill the mold. Where without that, it wasn't strong enough on its own. And I thought that was really unique. Now I didn't ask further if like this was like a guaranteed black mold eradicator because I don't sell it for black mold. 
but that's why he designed it. And they were doing it on lots of houses out there. And that was a big part of his journey. And so now that he passed it off to me, we decided to soup it up, make the best ingredients, add the peppermint essential oil. And that's where I'll transition over into telling you about the ingredients. So on the back of the bottle explains it. You can see we have a little bit of the plants that make this up on like in the image. But right here it says purified water. We use the EM1, you know, a certified organic product like for um, organic production, the EM1 is. And then we use an organic apple juice concentrate. And I know in the recipe we say molasses, but molasses is just the sugar source for this fermentation. And KNF uses a lot of molasses or a lot of brown sugar. It just kind of depends on how you're doing your ferment. And so some of the Jadam was like, hey, we shouldn't use sugars. And over here, what we're trying to do is get something that would lend itself best to the cleaning agent and be very clean and be utilized fully in that fermentation. And so using the apple juice concentrate allows us to marry that with the organic apple cider vinegar that we're using. And I think it creates a really good relationship for that fermentation and it works really well. On top of that, instead of grabbing like tequila or vodka or going and grabbing Everclear, we actually use organic grape alcohol. And if you're into making your own hash or, or processing your own plants, you'll know that a lot of people look for an organic alcohol to be a step above. And a lot of times they end up getting the bulk organic alcohol. It's expensive, you gotta buy a whole bunch at once. You can't just go get it at the local liquor store. Most people would grab Everclear or just a vodka or something. And a lot of times, like Everclear, it's made from just corn that is probably GMO and probably not what we really wanna support. Now, we're a hypocrite. It's not like I can make all these rules and follow them perfectly. But since we're into building soil, one of the things we don't wanna support is a lot of the big crops that are really GMO and heavily pesticide sprayed, kind of the worst offenders. So we used an organic alcohol. Um, and then we also use an organic yucca extract and that is to make it soapy. That's for the saponins. That's to make it an actual cleaner without going over to the, um, the lye. And then on top of that, we use the organic apple cider vinegar, which I discussed. And then we add the organic peppermint essential oil. And that, that once it gets all mixed together and ferments and locks down to a stable pH, it makes an incredible product that you can use in your garden. It's super gentle. You can dunk clones in it, spray plants, go full season outdoor flowering. A lot of people swear by this and it's their secret weapon. As far as the build a soil away goes, it's only one of three products that I like to have. They can be any three products that you prefer, but our method is to use one to three products that we can rotate. When it comes to all natural practices, we're trying to keep clean and we're also trying to change things up so that, because we're not using like a chemical that just kills things or eradicates. So having that is an advantage. I've got a couple other products that we recommend. This is the amazing Dr. Zymes Eliminator. This is an enzyme-based product, so it's a little different. These enzymes act on pests and all sorts of things. This is the original enzyme product called a Pesticafe instead of a pesticide, and this is the treatment plant wash. And this is an enzyme solution, and it's got other couple of ingredients, purified water, anionic, non-ionic, surfactant, glycerin, enzymes, peppermint oil, and, and sodium borate. The boron is also of benefit for plants and it also helps with pests. So this is the original. Guy like invented the enzyme process. This was um, later on, this was uh, maybe the last, I wanna say six, seven years. I can't remember the exact date. I was looking at other products online, found them, they have a pretty good following and I like enzyme products. So having like a Bronner soap or an EM5 and an enzyme product and rotating them is really how we do the whole natural IPM or integrated pest management process with the build a soil way. So that's how we use it. As far as dosage, I wanted to show you, I've got one gallon of water so you can see. And when you read on the back, normal use is one ounce per gallon. That's pretty much what I do all the time because I don't want to waste the money and it works phenomenally well at that rate. That's one to 128, which is you know the ratio of ounces in a gallon. So one ounce. Then dunking clones or on young plants, if you're really trying to preventative or if you may suspect an issue of some sort and you wanna try and clean it, two ounces per gallon. Heavy cleaning around or some of the worst problems on plants that you're just trying to really do a deep down dirty scrub, you can go two to six ounces or up to a one to one ratio. It's so gentle, you could probably use it straight, but I just think that that would be a waste. 50-50 is like the strongest I've ever done. A lot of times when I'm cleaning trays out and things like that, I'll do four ounces a gallon in hot water. I'll dump it in the tray, scrub it with a brush, and then shop back it back out if that's inside a set area, like an area, like a tent. Otherwise, you can read more about this on the website. And obviously, if you've already got it, then you probably know about it. 
Um, if you've got other tips and ways that you use this, if this is one of the products you really like, tell me, put it in the comments here, explain how you use it, why you use it. We found out that people use it for many more things than you originally set out. People using their laundry, people clean their house with it. I have had people you know, use it with their pets. I use it for my garden and that's pretty much exclusively what I use it for, but I do have a bottle at home and I will put it like in a spray bottle and I'll use it for cleaning. In a small garden, I use a little pump sprayer like this and I'll just mix it and pour it in. Otherwise, I usually use my big Chapin sprayer and that has a, a wand that I can get under the plants, on the top of the plants. And I think really good coverage is one of the most important tenets of keeping a clean garden. But the fact that it's gentle allows me to, like this is my first go-to always is the EM5. Now this is three ounces here and the one ounce per gallon is normal. And then you can see the two ounce per gallon is for like dunking clones, things like that. So why don't we do that? I'll pour an ounce back in. I just dumped this in to show the color. And so that is two ounces in a gallon. You can see it's totally water soluble. We're talking alcohol, apple cider vinegar. There's nothing chunky in here whatsoever. And it's in. If I put a lid on and shook it up, you'd probably see how foamy it is. So this is what I typically use. So I figured might as well just keep it authentic. I have bamboo poles and I cut off little pieces of them to use. And so you can see it gets really foamy and soapy and there's only the two ounces in the whole gallon and it works really well. So that's what we use it for. That's how clean it looks, especially because, you know, if you use molasses, this would be brown water. But when we use that apple juice concentrate as the sugar source, it filters it so clean that it really does feel like you're cleaning when you're using it instead of adding gunk to it when it's a molasses fermentation. So that's everything. You can make your own. I think the most popular formula for homemade is using like garlic, garlic and hot chili peppers. I love the peppermint because it just smells good. I don't have to like worry about the cayenne pepper burning me or anything like that. I think that's everything. I'm just gonna wrap this up. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you've got questions that come out of these, the whole point of doing a product highlight video is to teach you so that you can feel as passionate about, about the products as we do. And so then you understand, aha, they actually cared about the ingredients. They chose things that are better than I can buy without having to buy huge bulk amounts of them. And so then we feel like, if we're able to provide better than you can make on your own, there might be a reason why you would do business with us in the future. But let's say you live in another country. Look up EM5, make it on your own. You never have to buy anything from us. And I think that's part of this journey that we're on, to share all of what we've learned. We're not inventing any of this. We're basically taking it from those that have taught us, and taught us these things. And instead of just blindly giving you info, which a lot of people will do online, we put it through the last decade of, of hard work, seeing what does work, what doesn't work, and really distilling it down to the facts that we've been given by others before us that we know to be valid. And sharing that stuff because it really, truly works. And when people know that it works, it comes back full circle and that rubs off on build a soil and that's what keeps our business going. So we, we truly appreciate everybody that does business with us, but even if you don't and you make this all on your own, we still think you're a really big part of pushing that build a soil away, teaching others to benefit from these things. And you know, if something crazy happens and all the garden stores close down, we still should be self-sufficient enough to be able to make our own soil or tend to our own soil and make our own concoctions. And that's a big part of being independent. That's another part of build a soil's mission. So if you like this stuff, subscribe, like, tell your friends about it, comment in here, interact. It really helps the algorithm. And until the next one, I'll see you guys on the next build a soil product highlight video.